I remember that phrase. The Lord says, this is how you kill mammon. That's that, a good you know, phrase. Let's write that down. This is you how you kill, kill mammon. that spirit because it's a spirit, right? Yeah. Mammon, I mean, if we see it as a deceptive spirit that is trying to keep us under its control and its weapons are either greed or fear, and yeah. you actually envision it as a physical living entity yeah. Yeah. that's against you. It's your enemy, demonic entity. That helps so much. That's such a helpful way of thinking it. This is how you kill that thing that's it's trying to attack you. Yeah, and I, I, I remember that phrase even years later because I'm like, that. I thought it was kind of cool. I'm like, oh, I just, yeah. I just, I'm, I'm killing mammon. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, as a warrior, as a guy, do you really identify hmm. like this is how you kill it? is when I say give, you just, okay, boom. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Thriving in Japan. Uh, this is part two with Stephen. Hey, everybody. And we've been talking, uh, while well, Stephen's been sharing his story, which has been really interesting to hear things that I hadn't, didn't, uh, didn't know. Uh, and then <laughs> uh, we've gotten on to the more recent history, which is uh, Stephen and his family stepped out in faith and finances. Uh, we're all trusting God in finances, of course. Uh, if you're working a full-time job, if you're a millionaire, <laughs> or whether you are just uh, waiting on, uh, for God to supply your need through, um, through, through gifts and anything, whatever, you, wherever you are on the spectrum, we are called to a life of trusting God in finances. But finances is this incredibly uh, big challenge for human beings. And, but in the word, it seems to be, it's like the 101. It's like the very basic level uh, faith challenge in the scriptures. Like Jesus said, for example, just uh, thinking the, the scriptures that I often remind myself of, well, uh, the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. So desiring strongly after money or fearing not having money, that's a, that's a root mm. of a lot of issues. Uh, the story of the sower, he sows the seed and the ground with the thorns is people who love or fear not having things, the pride of life, but also things. So there's these challenges. Uh, and then the, of course, the parable of the talents, it's interesting that I think the, in the parable of the talents that Jesus is, uh, oh, in the parable, obviously, the, the, the boss gives financial uh, amounts of money to these people to look after, to, be, to steward faithfully. And if they're faithful, then he gives them cities. And you see the difference here. The first test is a test regarding finances. And then in the next test, they have... Uh, incredible influence given to them. So we're going to uh, transition our discussion a little bit and talk about how do we uh, walk this line of finances uh, and how do we remain mm, just focused in a, in a world where we're surrounded by so much fear over one side, fear of not having money and over the other side, love of money and just you know showing off etc so mm. Stephen, how's it been since you guys stepped out in 2018 october you gave up any paid work and you said lord we're going to trust you for uh our daily monthly expenses how's it been well yeah that trusting process is like okay it starts and now you're like you're kind of in this place of excitement in some ways because you're like okay well how's god going to do it but then as you get closer and closer to the deadlines and the bills start to come, yeah, there's yeah. a sense of urgency that hits you and a sense of what have I just done? Right. You know, when, when my children suddenly bring something that I haven't, cause see, I have my own thoughts about what I think we need. And then right. other things, you know, your family brings things to you like, Oh, I need this payment for you know, hundred dollars for this. And it's like, okay, God. So you're learning to go, okay, I literally have to give it up to God. Right. I'm like, I get a bill and I like lift it up in the air. <laughs> God, yeah. you see, I'm out. And so it was, it's a, it was a process, you know, even just kind of grinding my own life. I would try to figure out how to pay that. 
Right. I would, I would try to go, okay, well I can, and not that I, you know, still don't like, you know, money's got to move around and, yeah. and then say, in some ways we need to share uh, our needs. And that's where the challenge for me has been is like, okay, how much do I share with people on Facebook? Right. How much do I share with my brothers and sisters like Jeff in our prayer mm-hmm. times? You know, should I share about my daughter's tuition and how much it costs? Should I share, you know, h- how much do I share, you know, without set- trying to sound like I'm, I really, I'm begging a right, person right. Uh, or, uh, you know, I'm, I'm trusting God. And so that's even now, like just actually going to the Lord with how I share um, sure. because father, I know, you know, but I'm going to give it to you first. And then you tell me what to do about right, that. Right. Okay. Now you tell me to share on Facebook. Or just you right. tell me to share in the small group of men praying for me. Because I've had it, literally people who aren't on Facebook send me money that it's like exactly what I needed. Right. Um, and, and I even told them I needed some money for this situation. And they said, and they just sent me the exact amount just because right. God spoke on their heart. So it's that process of learning how to trust God in that yeah. area with every little bit, so, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so, and, and not, and of course, I, it's, a, it's a joyful thing to have. Um, you know, we were talking about the word yo-yo in Japanese, you know, yeah, to yeah, have yeah. the extra in the bank the account extra, the yo-yo, yeah. at the end of the month, at the end of the month, I go, Oh, we've got, we've got some extra, but I'm learning that that usually isn't going to stay there for long. Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So what are some of the keys? I mean, I'm going to just, uh, uh, share some of the keys that I have found myself and, uh, then maybe you can share some of the keys that you've found. Firstly is just hearing testimonies. I just love, reading books, uh, hearing testimonies about how God has led people again, like you could be anything from a millionaire to a person who's just, uh, living strictly by faith and, and waiting on God to supply their need. Uh, and the, actually I'm, uh, originally with youth of the mission YWAM and the founder Lauren Cunningham, uh, has some amazing books, full of testimonies, full of stories. A lot of them are about finances. A lot of the stories about this very simple pattern, really, where God would say something, people would believe it, and then he would supply the need. And Lauren Cunningham's an an interesting one for me. If anyone has the opportunity, please read, get to read some of Lauren Cunningham's books. Because he was um, originally raised in, I think it's Assemblies of God family, and he was raised in the Assemblies of God Church. And it's like when he was raised as a little child, his mom and dad had such faith, just, oh, don't worry, God's going to supply. And he, he, it seems to me, he just has no doubt, just no zero doubt that God's going to supply the need. And that's such a challenge because I think a lot of us, even after seeing so many miracles, it's like there's still always like, oh, you know, that, that fight. And you know, that's, that's okay. But, uh, I do, well, I found one of my keys is feeding myself on those stories and reminding myself of those stories, uh, both in the word and, you know, more recent stories. Uh, what are some keys that you have found as in these last few years? I think, well, for me, the Lord has really put the, you know, the verses of first seek ye first, the kingdom of God, yeah, you know, and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you, uh, which is often quoted in, in so many ways. And the other is give and it shall be given unto yeah. you. So th- those are the ones that kind of take both hands, you know, those two verses, you know, if I'm not giving of myself to mm-hmm. other people or, and that could be finances and, and it is, and I, I, I do give to people monthly um, from my flow. I, I share in a flow with other believers and people that God has, shown and give me a heart a purpose in my heart to give to um so as as i'm giving it shall be given and so just having this this heart of that's open to give all the time um financially or uh with physical effort you know i remember helping Mm -hmm. out one guy's uh he needed to his uh a wall reformed in his house because he was moving. And so I'm like, Oh, I have, I could do that. I know how to do that. So I'm going to give up my time and effort to help this brother. And of course yeah, he said, yeah. Hey, can I bless you back with here's some, you know, money. And that was not so much a pain position, but it's like, we just give and it's going to be given yeah, unto yeah. us. And so I, I really feel that there, that creates a flow for the kingdom. Yeah. And I'm learning like, okay, if I'm not giving, why should I expect to get, okay. be, have things given to me? Um, 
And Why don't so you share, another... share with us a little bit about that for your personal, and I'll share mine as well, but share a little bit about your personal history of, of giving. I think a lot of believers uh, obviously treat giving like a legalism, legalistic, uh, and then a lot don't, just don't give. I mean, well, if I have the money, I'll give. Uh, when did you settle it in your heart to be uh, faithfully giving um, either a tithe or just offerings or what, when, when did you go through that process? Um, I, well, I think just over the last five years, God has really been being helped me to understand to what level and to what degree, um, I, I should be giving and, and, and just really hearing him first about giving, uh, mm-hmm. having that dialogue with the Lord. And then when you committed to the Lord, then you feel really good and you can cheerfully give whatever yeah. you put yeah. in your heart. And cause you're like, Hey, that God, we, we and God talked about this. You know, right. We, right. we had this discussion. So one time, um, not too long ago, about three years ago, um, we, uh, and I was working at the time. So I did have, a, I didn't know I was going to get a salary, but right. the Lord, you know, but we had extra, you know, extra in the, in the bank. And it was about, um, I want to say close to $800 like to live off of $800, and then payday was like in a week or something, you know? So I'm like, Oh, we got 800 bucks. I mean, that's the Lord says, put it in. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, what do you mean? Like it meaning all of it. And I'm like, what in the offering? Just in a day, let's just, just at a normal church meeting offering. It wasn't like there was, they're raising funds for like building, you know, in a new right, building. Right, right. Or, it was just like a re- normal church offering. He says, put it all in. And I'm just yeah, kind of yeah. like, ah. and I looked at Yui and I go and look at her. And I, I think we talked in the car and he says, he says, all of it. Because she, she's like, are you going to give this at the, you know, whatever, what have you purposed or whatever? He says all of it. And I'm getting ready to go on a trip um, mm. to Okinawa at the time. Mm. And I'm like, if I put all that money in, what do I, well, how am I going to even go there? And it's like, I'm going to be, you know, here, here I am and can't even buy myself lunch, you know? Uh, so I put that $800, just boom, basically, you know, all of it, there it is, boom, there it is. Just, you know, Lord, uh, just obey. And, um, and so I, I did that, and uh, I, I uh, let me change the story. This wasn't the Okinawa one. That's a different one. But th- this one wasn't the Okinawa. I, but I went home that day um, after giving, and I literally got a message, uh, and it was double a check. Mm-hmm. I just received a check. Uh, it was sent to my parents' house for double, over double the amount of what I just gave. Right. And it just came out of the blue, just from someone who just says, hey, we wanted to bless your son. Uh, and I'm like, literally before the day was ended, I got wow. double what I put in the bank. And then I was like, oh, my gosh, wow, this is amazing. I told, you know. And then another situation, very similar, almost about the same amount I did in, before a mission to Okinawa. And that, you know, put it all in, Steve. And I'm like, okay, God, you know, and I did that. And literally, I went to Okinawa on a mission trip with nothing in my wallet, nothing mm-hmm. in my wallet. And I'm with Pastor Naomi, and we're... And she's like, and I told her the story. And she's, and she's just laughing. She's like, so you, you put it all in, so you got nothing. I'm like, I got nothing. <laughs> I got nothing. She's like, oh, all right. And she's just laughing about it, going, okay, well, let's, you know, I'll buy you something to drink, you know, at the uh, convenience store, or whatever. And I go in, and and I, I, I knew I had nothing in my wallet. And I'm going into the the to the convenience store, Lawson or something, and and uh, I open wallet because I think I had a point card or something. Maybe I could get a few things with because you know your point cards in Japan, you know. You could have yen in there, 100, 200 yen. And go, oh, yeah, you can buy, you know, onigiri or something like yeah. that. Uh, so I pull out, I'm looking for a point, a point card. And I, I noticed something kind of, you know, in the bottom of my wallet. And I pull it out and it is a Ichiman Satsu. Yeah, crumpled up, like literally in like a little tube. And I just like right, unrolled right. it. And I'm like, I where did that come from? And I just look at Naomi, Pastor Naomi, and she just, we just start laughing. Oh, what, what? And I just, it was, it was God. God put it in the wallet. You know, some people might argue, oh, that is, but who, who rolls up a little bill, stick in a wallet and does that? I'm like, that was what? And just start laughing. And in fact, I didn't even give, I, I didn't even use that money. I gave it to a home. I gave it to a person who was, who didn't have a home. Uh, right, right. Uh, cause I was met, all my needs were met. People were making wow. me food. People were giving me drink and water and wherever I went, my needs were met. So the Lord taught me, see Steve give and it will be given. Wow. So That's I went good. through that process over like the three or four years of, you know, and that wasn't every month, but that was like, I would have certain 
Yeah. The times where I just the, the 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 spirit would come and with conviction and yeah. like Steve, I, I want you to to give what mm. you have or what you know everything. Go to the bank now, take it out and give. Um, and he it's like tested my heart, and he, he really yeah. said, "The Lord told me, he says, this is how you kill mammon." Mm. I, I remember that phrase. The Lord says, "This is how you kill mammon." That's that, a good you know, phrase. Let's write that down. This is you how you kill, kill that spirit because it's a spirit, right? Yeah. Mammon. I mean, if we see it as a deceptive spirit that is trying to keep us under its control, and its weapons are either greed or fear. And yeah. you actually envision it as a physical living entity yeah. Yeah. that's against you. It's your enemy, demonic entity. That helps so much. That's such a helpful way of thinking it. This is how you kill that thing that's entity. trying to attack you. Yeah, and I, I, I remember that phrase even years later because I'm like, that. I thought it was kind of cool. I'm like, oh, I just, yeah. I just, I'm, I'm killing mammon. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, as a warrior, as a guy, do you really identify hmm. like this is how you kill it? is when right, right. I say give, you just, okay, boom. Right, right. You know, it it's has so, nothing on you. I just love the kingdom. The kingdom is always the opposite of the world. It's so counterintuitive to the world. As we all know, the word says, uh, give and it shall be given to you. You know, if you need something, well, give it away. You know? Right. Uh, what, what have you got? What have you got to give? You know, if you need, if you have need, what do you got to give? Do you have something you can give to somebody? Right, right. I, I, I just like to share briefly on my own journey, uh, on, uh, specifically regarding giving. Really did happen during or be a little bit before YWAM, but uh, around my brothers had been in YWAM, and so I got a lot of those stories from them. Uh, but then, yeah, jumping into YWAM and the whole culture in that was very much hear what God's saying, step out in faith, believe him, he will supply the need. And yeah, I just remember specific times where I had believed God was saying for me, and I think this one particular one was go to Hawaii for a school, for six months school. Um, and just, okay, I, I believe in faith. And again, you, I didn't feel like I hear, hear God really clearly. Is this really God? Is this right. me? Is this just my desire to go to Hawaii, you know? Right, exactly. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm having a little self-doubt problem here, but I've stepped out in faith. I've booked my ticket. I've even bought my ticket. Uh, just these different things. And my YWAM leader was just a good friend, a little, just a little bit older than me. I was only 21. He was 23 or something. And... Uh, what had happened? I think we got down to the day or the deadline or something and um, I, the money had not come in or it was still, still had not come in. There was still some time. And I was just so like under a cloud, you know, I was just so under a cloud and I got on the phone with my friend, my, um, this older, older friend leader. And he just started to say, say, Jeff, what has God said? What has God said? Do you believe it? And I just started speaking it out. Yes, and yes, I believe. He's called me to go to Hawaii. He's called me to go and do this. And it's funny because just I remember that phone call because it was like the clouds broke and mm. the light shone in. And it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't suddenly the money was there. It did come in and it did. And in fact, the whole trip of Hawaii, going to Hawaii and was full of tiny miracles like $10 miracle here, $100 miracle here, $50 miracle here. Just so many times God's faithfulness, you know. Uh, but it actually started back at that phone call with my friend where where it's like there was just this faith interaction, you know, this transaction of faith with God just saying, yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. And I just settled it in my heart back then. And that was, yeah, at the same time, uh, a lot of little stories of giving as well. You know, I had the money and I, I was, uh, you know, at that time I was single and uh, didn't have a lot of financial need, needs. Um, so what I had in my pocket, it wasn't like $800. <laughs> it was more like, you know, $10 or $20 or something, but to give that, to give that away and to, again, just trust God and to settle something in, in, in my heart, just to say, as, as a lifelong foundation, like, God, I trust you in what you've said, that you're yeah. going to supply 
the needs. And yes, it's a dynamic journey. Uh, sometimes he supplies needs through a work situation or a, uh, a, maybe we sell something. He tells us to sell something. Maybe uh, it's maybe it's a gift, a surprise out of out of the blue. But this journey of just trusting in finances, you know. Yeah. So for for us, you know, talk about selling something. You know, when we first came to Japan, um, we had tried to sell our car and it wouldn't sell, wouldn't sell, and then literally we had two hundred dollars in our hand ready to go to Japan and our mm. car sold, you know, right. Yeah. So right before the day before. So we had a little bit of a boost. Um, we still arrived with not a lot of money, but you know, it's like there, just, we have to be in that position mm. of we're like, God, what are we doing here? Tell right. us what, you know, and we're, if we're in that position daily, mm. then those, these, these, these sort of little miracles, big miracles, yeah. they're all yeah. his miracles. Yeah. We're going to yeah. see a manifest. You know, we actually yeah, see, yeah. Uh, like, I love what you said. He's like, we trust the word. We trust what he said. We stand on what he said, and, and then we can see the manifestation of it. Like, really, right. that's what I, I sense what we see, what we're seeing is the manifest word of God. Right. Like, because well, you could read the text and go, okay, what does that look like? Well, it looks like Jeff's story. And it looks like Steve's story. That's what it, that's the manifest of the yeah, logos. Yeah. And that's yeah, actually yeah. what God wants to do. That's actually mm -hmm. the manifestation of Christ. Because it says mm -hmm. Jesus manifests himself in our midst when we're together, when we're doing things, yeah, his yeah. manifest presence and literally the things that he said would happen will yeah, yeah. happen. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, it's so good to be mm -hmm. in that place. And so that's where, again, you, it's very counterintuitive to the world. The world says you need all these things yeah, yeah. to do these things. Right. Where the Lord says, no, you don't need all these things. You need one thing sit at my feet, you know, I mean, yeah, he's, yeah, he yeah, said yeah. that, you know, instead of being busy trying to satisfy all the other things, mm -hmm. um, we need to come to his, sit at his feet. And I think with finances, yeah, yeah. it is so much like that yeah, um, yeah, for yeah. us right now, even now. I mean, I don't even know how much money is in my bank account right now. Right. I don't even know what I'm going to need in two, three months um, right, because right. God, you know, the missions we're going to be going on or he, he, these all things have to come. It's that flow. And I think, yeah, yeah. You can, that, that, that holds true for, you know, I've been in the workplace and doing all this too, you know, mm -hmm. so it was, this, it's the same flow, but now I think the same part, yeah. it's the same flow, but now it's, it's kind of, I want to say it's a little bit more extreme right because of the, 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 the area I, I believe that's a time for Japan. God's looking for workers who will step yeah. out into this place of like, Hey, we just don't, we can't yeah, be yeah. committed to um, full-time uh, right. work that's paid work. Because yeah. there's there's this other you know the kingdom stuff really has to be um, yeah. the top priority for us, hmm. um, and so that's where you know the Lord, you know for the increase the reason of the increase is why I've yeah. left not because I wanted to live in a you know in a sense a, a lower lower income class although that's the reality <laughs> I was like I just want to live in a lower income class clean class to show God's faithfulness you know like George <laughs> Mueller that's not I'm actually believing for the increase that's why I left. <laughs> but it's just kind of a funny dialogue to have yeah, you know, yeah. with God's faithful. We have to be honest about this. Yeah, like, absolutely. Because, if, if, yeah. if, you know, I don't want to be shaking like, hey, guys, I don't have enough money, you know. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I, well, don't you know I pray for you? <laughs> yeah, I was sharing with you uh, the other day. I think it, it's, it was a reminder to me. Uh, I have some, old, uh, some older friends in there. Uh, they're about 15, 20 years older than us. And they've lived this life of of faith they have a ministry and they send out prayer letter and people support them and so their incomes up and down all the time and and they are just simply asking god for um what's the next step in life where should we go what should we do and believing that god's going to supply those needs and the uh, the the husband said to me something very interesting i thought which was basically they've been living like that for like 30 or 40 years and it it never gets easy mm -hmm. and uh, bless them in that. Um, that's, that's wonderful. But I do want to, I, I guess my challenge in that was like, wow, if this isn't going to get any easier, for example, the challenge, Lord, help me settle it even more in my heart to enjoy that process as a challenge. If you know what I mean? Mm. Like if the fine, like I, I think we were talking the other day about uh, sometimes we're waiting for that million dollar donor. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> Sometimes yeah. we're like, we have that little dream, like, oh, I'm going to meet that person and they're going to be like, hey, I'll just be sending you exactly what you need every month. And, and it sounds so, it sounds so good. And I'm sure it can happen for some people, you know? Um, and if it does happen for some people, bless them in it. But I wonder if God is actually keeps us on this, this place so, so that we continue just to press into him in faith. And what I just settled in my heart when I heard that from my friend, that it doesn't, the financial ups and downs doesn't get any easier. It was like, I want to settle it even more in my heart mm. to enjoy this process and allow it to really grow me in my faith. Yeah, yeah it, you know, I'm reminding of this Bible verse in James, um, talking about this James 2. Um, mm. It talks about, listen, my beloved, this is James 2, 5, just for the reference. Listen, my beloved brothers, has not God chosen the poor in this world to be rich in faith and right. heir of the kingdom that he promised to those loving him? Yeah, yeah. So, like, this is, there's an honor um, there, there's a, there's a promise, there's a, there's an inheritance, right? Um, mm -hmm. But it says the poor in this world, like you know, and this could, you know, this, uh, uh, you know, you can go on and talk about the poor in the faith and the poor, poor, you know, poor. I mean, poor in spirit and you know that sort of uh, knowing that we need God. And I do believe that, but the rea the reality is when you have a need, like you're saying, I think God sometimes, if, if we, if oh, there's millions of dollars flowing in and we mm -hmm. weren't in that place of relationship with God, mm -hmm. total reliance on God, you know, we could build a whole bunch of stuff that wasn't supposed to be built. You know, we, right. Could, right. we could mess right. a lot of things up. Yeah. So oh, I, think, yeah. I think a lot of weird things happen in the world because there's just money to do in the, in the church in the Christian church. Right. Just to build, money to know, do just to build to something that did God say to build that. And right, right, but if right. you're like, if you're literally month to month, you're hearing him, you're, 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 you know, maybe in the, the world's eyes, hey, you, you're living in, you know, poverty or the lower income or, you know, but he says they're the rich in faith. They're yeah, the ones yeah. inheriting the kingdom. Yeah, and so yeah. in a sense, like you can actually lose sight of the kingdom because you have so much abundant flow of right, right, mon right. monetary blessing. So I think, right. of, you know, when you're sharing that, you're sharing about these people too, that they are in a place of, these guys are walking in the kingdom. They, yeah. they, they know uh, their inheritance in God. So they're not worried about how much they have extra right now. Um, so right, I think right, that, right. that, that verse really is again, one of the ones I hold on to as well yeah, Has he yeah, not yeah. chosen the poor in this world um, to be rich in faith. Now that doesn't mean always poor because I mean, yeah, there yeah, may yeah. be times of, you know, but you're talking about the contentment. I've learned to be content. Right. Paul said, and that, yeah. that settling of just like, you know what? Shalom. Yeah. Peace, yeah. you know. I think there's I a peace. yeah. There's a proverb. There's a proverb. One of the proverbs is like that. Uh, Olemio, I think it's in the end of Proverbs, maybe thirty or, or somewhere. Anyway, uh, but it does is don't give me not too much. Give me not too little, so that. Uh, and that's interesting. We were talking about this again the other day. How um, I've had these, and I don't. I don't want to. I, I I'm a little nervous sharing these stories because it makes it makes. I don't want to um, make it sound like I'm, uh, what'd you say? Disappointed at God's character or anything like that at right, all. Right, right. It's, it's more of an amusing thing to me, but I want to, I shared a story that where um, we received some inheritance money. And when we received that, half of the money we used to buy a car. So we didn't need a loan. That was good. And then the other half of the money, I literally thought, you know, Oh wow, it's going to be so good. We're going to have this, this little fund to keep and have some yo yo. How do we yeah, say yeah. that? Yo yo. This uh, extra, extra button. I don't, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's hard to translate. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I had this thought, and interestingly, anyway. right at that time, we put on, uh, we had been wanting to put on uh, solar panels onto the house, and we had done that. And uh, the government in Japan gave, at that time gave very, very generous, very cheap loans uh, for that. And mm -hmm. we were applying to get a loan to put all the solar panels on. And, and for a little miscommunication with, the, with the, the company that did the solar panels, basically I, did, I didn't apply for the loan before they got put on. They got put on first. And then I applied for the loan and they were like, oh, don't worry, you'll get the loan. 
and I got the phone call from the bank in the middle of this process and uh, I could hear by the lady's voice, she said, oh, uh, I'm sorry to tell you. And I just, before she even said it, I just started laughing because I knew what, what had happened. Basically, oh, for whatever reason, I've not got the loan. And in other words, all the buffer, the money that we'd been given, uh, <laughs> the leeway that I had, thought right? was going to be like the, you know, the leeway uh, is gone. <laughs> And we've had actually, so, and it, it did, it all got covered. It all got covered, able to pay for the, uh, for the solar panels, able to pay for the car back to zero. <laughs> and we've had just so many occasions like that where, oh, oh, look, we've got a little buffer. We've got a little leeway now. And then bang, it's gone. And I don't want to make it out to sound like God has been mean at all. I don't take it. I don't personally take it like that at all. All I take it as is God saying, I want you to trust in me. I want you to just look to me. And, uh, you know, and that's hard because, you know, you hear these um, stories of, and uh, maybe you're watching advertising on TV and it's like, oh, are you putting money away for your pension fund? Are you doing this? Yeah. You doing that? And I'm like, well, I would <laughs> if I had the money. But, you know, I think uh, just keeping me on a short leash. God is keeping me on a short leash. Is that a bad, right. is that a yeah. bad way? To that's the way to look at it because you're right. There are so many things in front of us that says, you know, are you prepared for this? Are you yeah. prepared for that? And then you know, that talks about that spirit of fear, that spirit of, that says like, you're not going to have enough. Um, but the Lord promises. And so we have to go back to the word, but it is, it's a sense of amusement. Cause like I, if I get leeway, I'm actually looking <laughs> proactive, like, all right, I'm getting ready for something to happen. <laughs> and I don't, I don't want, to, I don't want that to be an unbelief or disbelief either. But I, almost in a comical sense, like, okay, Lord, we got extra this month. So what, what are we going to do with that? Is something coming? So we, you know, so you have, I kind of, have, you know, your antennas go up <laughs> in a way yeah. because it's happened so many times. Um, is it okay, Lord, to have that for you know, like an extra month? You know, um, or going to next month? You know, or, or yeah, does that yeah. need to go somewhere? Um, or should right, I just right. hold on to it? Because. That's the relationship he's he's kind of uh, doing with us. He wants he wants right, us to walk right. in that short so, leash, to know his voice, be known by him. Because we've actually, when he tests us, then he can call us faithful. Yes. Because if you're never tested, guys, you can't be called a faithful servant. Yeah. So if he's testing you, that's where we, in a sense, we can rejoice. It's like, okay, if we pass that test, now he says faithful. He's he's going to call you faithful servant right, right. because right. he's tested you with that area of of of, of finances. Mm. And and uh, absolutely, is there frustration? Absolutely, Jeff and I, we, we we were talking about our frustrations and at times because it is. We, but that's 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 our mind. It's yeah. not our spirit, right? Mm -hmm. We were talking about Jeff. Yeah. You were yeah. sharing about the the spirit and the mind and 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 and, and the flesh and kind of getting all that kind of in the right order is, is really yeah. what yeah. helps us, right? And because mm. you know, so mind is confounded. Like, how is this going to happen? Because we yeah. want to know the how with our mind. Yeah. How, how am I going to pay the bill that's on my counter right now sure. for, you know, 200 bucks that's due in yeah. three days? And like, how is that? That's our mind. Uh, but we have the, the spirit kind of governs it all, right? It has to be on yeah. the top. Sure. The spirit and then the mind yeah. and, you know, your soul, uh, your emotions. And, yeah. you know, not that those, we have to say that those aren't valid. You know, you're going to yeah, have yeah. emotions. Right. No, we don't. It's about we don't okay, staying, staying active. And well, maybe we can just like share a few encouragements to people because I'm sure there's people out there who hear some of these stories and maybe this is so foreign to them. Maybe they've come uh, very, very much on a, you know, um, they have all their finances in order. And, and you know, there's a lot of people and I, I totally respect that. They have all their T's crossed and their I's dotted and their lowercase J's dotted. Um, so they want to make sure everything's, you know, in order and stuff, but they still are worried and fearful about money. And I guess my encouragement is to, um, is to really surrender the whole area of finances to the Lord. Surrender that area as worship. You know, the offering is worship. Uh, giving is worship because the father is such a giving father. And if you have any struggles regarding uh, finances, either the fear of money or the love of money, then I think something like you said, Stephen, before to kill mammon, <laughs> that's yes. the weapon 
is is abundant generosity just to say you know what i'm i want to ask god ask god for a strategy how can i give abundantly uh it's easy to get into a, a sort of legalist and it's not necessarily a bad thing but if you have a, a a habit of tithing well you know i'm going to give away my tax every month and the rest of the money is mine i mean i tend towards that thinking you know it's like no i i want to i want that thinking broken off me where i don't see tithing or giving as being a tax and the rest is mine but all of our if we're surrendered to christ then all of our money belongs to him mm. it's good to have it's good to have guidelines i i have we have as a family personal guidelines for who and what and how we give, but it's also, it's, it's more than that. It's, it's the overflow, isn't it? Yeah. That's so well put. It's like kind of looking at, at giving and how we should operate in that, the spirit of giving that is in align with scripture rather than out of obligation or that somehow in the sense that, you know, it's more blessed to give than to receive too. Like, mm. so being in the position as the giver is a more blessed position like God, because God is the ultimate giver. And mm -hmm. so if we're in a, we want to be in a position of give giving um, as a giver to, to see our, mm -hmm. almost can make that part of our identity, right? right, right I'm right, a, gen, right. I'm a generous giver. Like I will give. Um, mm -hmm. So God, who are we going to give to this, this week mm -hmm. or this month? What can we mm -hmm. give and ask, what yeah, can yeah. we give? You know, it may not be finances maybe it's 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 time it's investing and uh, but i think with the area we're talking about finances is the first practical thing because if you take yeah. away financial um abundance like yeah. you don't have any money in the bank you, you really have to trust god in a practical way yeah 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 more than just saying oh i trust god with everything but you're like no actually you 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 step into that and so it, it really does break off that spirit that says well if you don't have this amount yeah you yeah. can't do this or you can't do that um which is mm. which is again the counter to yeah, what yeah, scripture yeah. says yeah and and i think it, i'm just reminded of a story right now as we're talking where jesus and peter are talking i think peter had just been asked a question about money uh from some pharisees or teachers of the law and then he goes to jesus and before before peter can open his mouth and even ask jesus about it jesus obviously has a word of knowledge that Peter's had this interaction about talking about tax. And then he brings this, I can't, and maybe I'm misquoted, I hope I don't, but um, it's where he says, Jesus says to Peter, so Peter, um, should the the sons of the uh, the king pay tax or should the right. people pay tax? And Peter's like, well, the, the people should pay tax. And he says, it's, it's right. And he says, but so as not to offend people, we are also going to pay tax. Okay. Mm. And what he does in this mysterious little story, and then he tells Peter, go to go and go fishing, get the first fish, and there's going to be a coin in its mouth and pay tax, your tax and my tax with that. And mm. it's just this incredible little, little snippet uh, story, but what it, tells me is that we are just of a separate kingdom mm, right we have to be in a mindset of being a different kingdom because he's saying in that look peter uh are you a, a just just a servant in the in the kingdoms of this world or are you a son of the living god yeah and which do you saying, identify yeah yeah which do you identify with and he's saying that's right. You are a son of the living God. And so you are not obligated under that system of the world, but so as not to offend you that I'm going to supply you. God's going to supply your need. You're going to be able to pay all your taxes. You're going to be able to fulfill your needs, but just remember this. You are a son of the living God. And I think this is a battle that I think a lot of us just, again, we have to settle because we get caught up in, in fear regarding insurances and future pension schemes and and we we come under the worry of the world because it's so around us everywhere we go right mm. and um we are we are not called to live according to the world we're called called to live according to the voice of god according to what he says and he might say yeah go for that pension scheme i i'm, I'm going to open the door for you this i'm going to show you the best one you could be involved with and so god's you know 
not limited at all, but it is putting that priority in place, putting that uh, identity in place so that we know that we are sons and daughters of the King in everything of our lives, including finances. Well, amen to that, because that, once you have that flow, it's like that we've been talking kind of, that's the flow, right? Then, hmm. then you're not, um, you know, you may have an emotional reaction to your situation when hmm. a bill comes suddenly. I, I still do. I still go, oh, yeah. Yeah. But I know the flow. I know how right. to take it up to here and then it take the Lord and see the flow happen. And that's just, it's yeah. been months of doing that every month. Yeah. Oh, and this is, and this is the process of, you know, think about um, the kneading of the dough or right. You know, yeah. the, the working of the metal and how that it's folded again and hit with a hammer. And this yeah. is how he's forging his sons. Um, mm. Disciple discipline his sons. It says we shouldn't despise the Lord's discipline in yeah. this area of finances and faith, because yeah. it's yeah. going to result in some very powerful people uh, yeah. of yeah. the kingdom. Yeah, I really believe Japanese once they, they, you know, because this is, you know, we're in Japan for missionaries uh, and as missionaries, we have to kind of live this out yeah. so that yeah. the Japanese see what it looks like. Yeah. That's and true. then they can go, Hey, if this guy can do it like this, I can do it too. Sorry, and, yeah. and then it's going to create a, a I believe a, just a, a shock wave mm. uh, in the culture of Japan, which is so yeah. conservative, which is so reserved, which is mm. so about, I mean, think about all the insurance in Japan. Oh, yeah, I mean, all, 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 and... oh my gosh. I mean, the insurance, it's just like, it's always actually, I mean, every time I open a mailbox, I've got insurance, you know, yeah. and stuff, you know, they're trying to get you to get insurance for everything. Um, but we, we know that that's counter kingdom culture hmm. in a lot of ways. I'm not saying that like, you get a great point. If God says to get, get it because he's showing you wisdom because he wants you to do it. That's what we, we just do the things he shows us yeah. and we'll be confident in that. Um, you know, there's no other, you know, we don't go to Pharaoh, right? Like in the Bible, it's just, you know, don't go to Pharaoh for your insurance to, to win the battle, go to the Lord. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So these principles of the kingdom, we, how does that live and come out in our daily life? This is, yeah. In this discussion, I hope that people watching, yeah. hearing yeah. that, like, that's how it works out. It's like, I, before I, uh, mm. you know, I make that uh, commitment that I ask the Lord, okay, this is what you want me to do with my mm. finances here mm. to give to this person or yeah. to do yeah. these things or to buy this mm. thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And he's going to honor that. He's going to, God is going to honor the fact that you went to him. Yeah. This is what I've learned. I, I, after, Cause I get this shalom from it. I get this peace that I can't explain. Right. And even though it looks like kind of silly, like you just got all this extra money. Now you're going to buy, you know, this sort of technology computer. Do you really need that, Steve? Hmm. And it's like the Lord just, that's what he's saying to do. Right. Hey, okay, you know, and step out. And it doesn't, maybe yeah. it doesn't yeah. look like it makes sense when you have other right. needs. So it's just learning that uh, in the hmm. kingdom is hmm. a really big way that we can actually practically show what in, what the kingdom, you're talking about the identity, what the identity looks like. Because yeah. we're not going... Um, to our boss and to somebody to ask for something we're going to God. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, that's and good. we're hearing, hearing, hearing him go fishing. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that does not sound like, you know, here's how you want. Hey, Jeff, here's how you pay the bill. Go fishing. I mean, it's yeah. like, what go fish for, you know, I mean, of course they're fishermen, but it's like, that's not going to pay the gold tax. We have, you know, right, right. it doesn't make sense, but he may tell you to do that. That's right. He's, you know, you got a bill to pay. Yeah. Go do a prayer walk and walk down the road. You may meet yeah. someone also. And this person, Boom, God does something, you know. Because opens uh, the door, yeah. That's yeah. Right. So. This is great. Okay, well, we're going to uh, wrap up here, but I just want to pray for people. I just believe it's, uh, again, um, thriving in Japan, thriving. It's not just in Japan, in life in general, our dynamic relationship with God. Finances is a big issue that needs to be settled in our hearts. And I believe for those listening, if, if this is an area that's not settled, that perhaps there's either fear or there's uh, the love of money, for example, that God wants to deal with it in our hearts so that our hearts are settled uh, with him as our supply, him as our leader and guide. And whether, whether we're a millionaire owning a business or whether we're living by faith each month, it doesn't really matter. We live according to the voice of God. So, uh, Stephen, why don't you just pray over people? And also, let's just pray against and recognize that spirit of mammon. I think that was a really good word. That If we recognize that this world, there is a spirit that, that is actively promoting the love of money or the fear of not having money. That's an active spirit that is coming against us. 
that is a coming against people, keeps millions of people in bondage, uh, just causes such death and destruction, havoc amongst families and companies mm. everywhere. We, if we recognize the, the enemy for what he's doing um, so that we can come with the, the, the spiritual weapons of, of truth and life and obedience, uh, giving is a spiritual weapon. So yeah, Stephen, why don't you go ahead and pray and I'll uh, pray to wrap up as well. Okay. Yes, Lord, we thank you that you're, we can stand on your word, Lord, that it says that you will provide for all our needs to the mm. glorious riches in Christ Jesus. So in Christ, Lord, we just declare over those watching that your needs will be met. They are being met and mm. that we should be thankful. And Lord, it's just, let the spirit of thanksgiving rise mm. up in the people right now because it says that it is the will of God for us to be thankful in all circumstances. This is the mm. will of God in Christ Jesus. So th let these words that are the scripture come alive in them right now, even as they hear my, my voice that the, you, the Spirit of God, Father, that you would pour out on them a just a peace in the area of finances, a, a boldness even mm. to be a, a giver, a bold giver, uh, and that they would seek to hear you first, Lord. And we bind the enemy. We bind the voices of the enemy. We muzzle them, as it says in the scripture, that you, you muzzled the voices of the demons, Jesus. We muzzle the voices of the fear. Uh, we muzzle the voices of, of the greed of of mammon, that spirit, and we, we come against it in the name of Jesus, in the people of God. We, we kill it with the, with the giving, with a generous heart. We kill it, yeah, yeah. Lord, the, that spirit of man. We drive it out of the people of God. So as you're listening, the people listening, Lord, I bless them. I said they are a blessing, that they have been made a blessing in Christ Jesus, a glorious, rich, uh, mm. A bountiful blessing to the people mm -hmm. around them that they are not uh, one that is uh, you know taking and but they are becoming a blessing uh, yes, they're, yes. because they're giving and it shall be given unto them when they've committed mm -hmm. to give Lord you're gonna the, the giving from even from others it says that men he will give into your your, your bosom into your lap mm -hmm. you know so mm -hmm. men will give to you so God mm -hmm. you're gonna cause uh, people to give as we give Hmm. So there's there's a there's a twofold so lord move on the hearts of those of givers lord right now hmm. as, the, as the person listening becomes uh, they say yes to you they agree with your word they become a giver move on hmm. other people's hearts now to give to them lord and so we see this kingdom flow increase in the name of jesus as a result yes. we want to see you increase lord hmm. all, you're on the increase we want to bless what you are doing god in your people yes, in jesus name jesus name. Finances. yes in yes. jesus name Yes, I just speak out uh, 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. All, 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 every. God, you are good. You are faithful. And I just pray for my brothers and sisters listening right now uh, that each of them would uh, be able to take time just to hear you. If they're already just walking in alignment with your word, that they would just be filled with joy and be able to uh, just be more and more abundant in that area. If there's any one who's walking out of alignment, either in fear or greed or trusting in something apart from you, I pray that you would just uh, allow them to hear your Holy Spirit, to just realign, just to repent, turn back to you so that they can trust you fully. And just, again, speak faithfully. You are faithful to speak to your children, to show them how to respond, to give, to be abundant, to, to um, give up that job or start that job or do whatever you're saying to them. And, uh, yeah, through this obedience, through giving, through being abundant and generous, we are, are destroying the work of mammon in this, in this nation, in this land. So, yes, fill our hearts and help us be more and more settled, Lord, in your goodness and your faithfulness. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So good. Great. Always a pleasure. Well, thank you very much, Stephen, and we look forward to catching up again with you soon.